In the last video of this series, I showed you how we could use Yahoo to download the total stock history for any stock. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass the symbol through um, within the query string at this URL, ichart.finance.yahoo.com. And that's going to return us a CSV. So our goal here is to download all of the different CSVs um, to get all of the trading history for all of the different stocks. We already have a list in our database of all of the different stocks. Um, we're accessing that at the top here with DB table stocks. However, I've made some improvements to this code, so I just wanted to do a revision on the last video here. So let's just do a quick run through of what's happening um, in this revised script. First things first, if you're running this script from the browser, you're going to want to use the set time limit function and pass it zero. Um, that's going to give you an infinite amount of time uh, to execute this script. Uh, it could be in your php.ini. Um, there will be some kind of timeout for PHP. So you want to make sure um, that you don't have that timeout. The next thing we're doing is restoring the date because we're going to use this after we store one of the CSVs and we're going to update our stocks table with this new field that I added um, which is called history downloaded and we're going to store the date for when it was downloaded. So we can do that within Laravel um, selecting the stocks table with DB table stocks and we're looking where the symbol is equal to the symbol that we're iterating over and then we're going to update the history downloaded field um, to that date. Make sure if you're doing something similar that you're just storing the date, you're not storing date time because this kind of script is going to be run once per day um, probably done with a cron so um, in order to check the integrity of our data and to see if we downloaded something for a particular date you're not going to want to store date time where the seconds is always changing let's just store date here so let's go to the top of this function here the first thing you're doing is db table stocks so we're going to work with our stocks table and we're going to select all of the symbols from it where the symbol is not like uh, the caret sign. Some of the stocks that I downloaded initially they have a caret sign in it because they're preferred shares and I don't want to work with these right now I don't want to include them in the app at this point so we're going to select all the stocks um, where that caret is not located anywhere in the symbol and also where there's no slash located in the symbol some of the stocks um, also have a slash within them and I don't want to work with those now either so we're not going to select any of those and we're doing this where history downloaded is not equal to the current date so if we found something where history downloaded was equal to the current date that means that we've already run this script before and we've already downloaded that file for today so when you're running long scripts like this on thousands of files or tens of thousands of files um, it's very possible that your script is going to get killed in the middle for whatever reason you run out of memory or it could be any other sort of reason so if we've already downloaded one of the CSVs uh, we don't want to do that again each time that we download a CSV and we store it um, at the bottom here you'll see I'm storing in the database uh, for that symbol history downloaded set the date so we have a record of that so in the future when we run this script again because it failed we're not going to be downloading that file again and then story, storing it again, overwriting something that we already had. So once we have an array here of all of the stocks that we need to download and store, we're going to loop over that array for each stock says stock, and then we're going to go into this try catch statement. Within the try catch statement, we're doing a file get contents on ichart.finance.yahoo.com slash table.csv and then within the query string, s is equal to the stock symbol. If there was any error here, we're catching the exception, and then we're printing to the command line here, print um, e get message. So this will be useful if you're running it over the command line. And if you were doing it in the browser, um, this is not going to cause any errors. You can run uh, print, you can run eol. It's not going to throw any errors there, but you're going to have to wait until the end of the script to get all this feedback whereas with the command line you're going to get instantaneous feedback. After we've downloaded that file and stored it into memory, we're going to run file put contents. The first argument we're passing is our app path. So this is a Laravel helper function, but basically the first argument is just going to be the path um, where you want to store the file to and also the name that you want to give it. 
And then the second argument is the return data from file get contents. If file put contents was able to successfully write a file, what it's going to return is the amount of bytes that it wrote. Um, if it failed, file put contents is going to return false. So the next check we're doing here is if there were any bytes, um, we're going to print this feedback for ourselves, stored CSV for this symbol, and then we're also going to get some feedback about the amount of bytes that we wrote. The last thing that I want to stress is whenever you're running scripts like this, where you're downloading thousands of files, or you're updating the database with thousands of records, or tens of thousands of records, your script has a very good chance of failing in the middle, so you might need to run it again and again to get it to finish. So it's going to be really important to do some record keeping for functions like this as to which files have we downloaded already, which ones have we saved, and then keep a record. So I'm doing that here with DB table stocks, and then where the symbol is equal to that symbol name, we're updating history downloaded to the current date. So when this script does fail and I run it again, we're going to go back up to this first select statement here, and we're not going to select any symbols that we've already downloaded their file for. We're doing that with this line where history downloaded does not equal the date. So that means anytime this script fails, once it's run again, it's going to pick up from exactly where it left off the last time. So let's go over to the command line and see this in action. Um, I'm using Laravel here and I'm using a command line program called Artisan Tinker. However, you could do a similar script um, just with a regular PHP over the command line and you could also do this script through the browser as I mentioned. But within Tinker anyways, I can instantiate my controller with new fetching controller and I just put that within parentheses. So that's going to instantiate that controller there. And then I'm appending on the fetch stock history method. And if we hit enter here, so I've just run this script here and it did successfully download and store three different files. And then we got a PHP warning and then we stored a whole bunch of other CSVs. So, so far it seems like uh, more than 90% are working. However, we did get this one warning, which was for this stock, ADXSW, uh, failed to open stream, HTTP request failed. Um, so it wasn't able to make a successful request there. This kind of error, this is just a warning. Um, it's not going to stop the script from running. So you can see the advantage of doing the record keeping I was doing, um, where we were storing history downloaded to the current date. So when we get HTTP fails like this and we get this warning, um, the script is still going to continue. We're still going to get um, all of the CSV data for those other stocks. But the ones where we had an HTTP error, um, such as with this stock, ADXSW, the next time we run this script again, um, it's going to make another attempt at this. And maybe the next time um, that request will be successful and we'll have no error here. So let's just continue running the script here and see what else we find. So I'm not expecting many of these to fail. However, if any of them do and we they don't make a successful HTTP request and download that file, we're not storing that confirmation in the database. There was another one, um, ALLY. So the next time we run this script, it's going to make another attempt at that. And if it happens that some of these stocks, um, you know, we make 10 requests, 20 requests, and it just can't make a successful request, then we're just not going to be able to get that data.